Okay, hi. So I was intending on letting this be a Facebook Live, but since I have ventured into the realm of new phones and technology and myself are not the greatest friends in the world, I decided that I best record this on my phone first and then post it later just in case we have a technological meltdown, since technology and myself are not the greatest of friends. So I believe today is Thursday, so happy Thursday, and um, a few things has happened over the last couple of days which always give me inspiration of the topics that I should speak about. So um, you may have come across a post on Instagram or on Facebook promoting or advertising, I guess, uh, a talk on burnout. So this is exactly what I'm going to be speaking about today. I'm going to try to keep it as short as I possibly can with my new fancy phone that's giving me a countdown here. So um, it needs to be as efficient and as useful as possible, but also within a reasonable time span. So the first thing that I'm just going to give you some info on is how I tend to approach things with my own you know, path of life and how we're trying to figure all of this stuff out. And I tend to have, I tend to take inspiration from people who um, I may or may not see or feel as successful in certain aspects of their lives and then try to implement that along, um, you know, along the life or along the path life for myself. So the, with that being said, the first thing that comes up is the word success and what we all as individuals deem as being successful, right? So this is very much... Um, it's very much culturally influenced and we are pretty much conditioned by the society that we're living in. So for me, I find it immensely beneficial that, like I've said on pretty much every Facebook Live, but I have uh, more people that's joining. So I'll probably say this every single time I do a talk. I've lived in Asia for the majority of 16 years in various countries. So I tend to amalgamate um, a lot of my perception and my frame of reference comes from beyond uh, Western culture, right? Of course, I have a frame of reference for Western culture as well, and then Western culture within itself is very much divided. And by when I say Western culture, I mean countries like, um, you know, countries where I've lived, including the UK, South Africa, and now Canada, we don't have the same social cultures within these countries, right? So even though they may be Western countries, the culture is substantially different, um, and then even the provinces and the towns within a, uh, within a country is totally different. So I tend to be a very self-reflective person and I try to take what is useful for myself and leave what is not useful rather than just automatically buying into everything that um, I see in the environment around me. I try to find a middle path now. Um, I try to find a middle path for myself and what works well for me. Previously, of course... As a much younger version of myself, I was totally unaware that you actually had this option of considering what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And yes, as a young woman, I did very much buy into the cultural norms um, that turned out to not entirely be what I wanted for my own life. So having said that, the reason why, this, uh, the reason why I decided to do this talk is because an important conversation came up with two lovely young women a couple of weeks ago and the topic of burnout you know came up into this conversation and I felt like for my own integrity and for people to actually have an understanding of where I'm coming from with Cellular Life Institute it's important for me to actually share some of my own um, life lessons and some of my own path as to how I can speak about and essentially teach some of the stuff that I teach. Everything that I teach and everything that I share is from a place of personal experience, including the topic of burnout. So I've done this twice, right? I've, I've, uh, the first time really wasn't, a, wasn't good enough. I had to do it a second time and it was uh, quite substantial. So um, first of all, what I'm going to just share with you is some information on three people who I had as... Um, mentors or people that inspired me and then also in terms of like my self-reflective processes that I question everything and I also question the people who I admire right so three of these people one of them is the, is a woman that I only came across within this week 
which is quite interesting. And, and hearing a podcast on her and coming across it for the first time also very much um, inspired this uh, talk. So her name is CJ Walker, and she was uh, initially an orphan at the age of seven, but she ended up becoming self-made, and she became the wealthiest uh, African American in the States, in the U.S., right? The nutshell of her story, however, is that she was the first female self-made millionaire in the U.S., and she died at the age of 51 with uh, kidney failure and complications from hypertension. The second person who has inspired me and who I've, um, who I've really admired and probably largely influenced from having lived in Asia and being surrounded by martial arts, of which I consider yoga to be one, I do very much consider yoga, the mind of yoga, to be um, very much influenced as a form of martial art. So the second person is Bruce Lee. Now, one of the most important things that I need to say about Bruce Lee is that most people have no clue what the end result of Bruce Lee's life was. We all focus very much on this man that was immensely passionate. He was an amazing martial artist. He was a film, you know, he was in film. He was substantially successful. So whatever success means for you, society has very much deemed this man to be successful. Now, um... One of the many things that I, that I do and one of the many things that I have enjoyed has been genealogy and social history. So genealogy is basically tracing your family tree, tracing your roots. And as part of that massive project, which was a substantial ongoing project, I tend to now look at everything with the perception of how do you actually want to end your life? As opposed to how successful you are during the, during the course of your life. For me, my perception of what is true success is how we end this journey. So the story of Bruce Lee, in a nutshell, is that Bruce Lee was immensely, you know, uh, famous. However, in the last year or two, his autopsy was actually released publicly. And it was found that Bruce Lee was actually diagnosed as an epileptic as a child. He died at the age of 32, and on his autopsy that was recently released to the public, he was actually found with half a gram of marijuana in his stomach. And, that's not all, another 400 grams, uh, sorry, 400 milligrams, so just shy of half a gram of marijuana in his small intestine. However, no epileptic medication was found in his system. So on further investigation, it was found that he had had some very severe uh, epileptic seizures in the weeks leading up to his death, but he was not on any epileptic medication. So he'd essentially turned his back on the health care that he required. Uh, he was exercising excessively and uh, using painkillers and marijuana to pretty much just numb out the effects of his physical body and to keep on pushing through. And so he died at the age of 32 with a cerebral edema, which is water on the brain, caused by seizures. So a couple of hours before he died, he was complaining about headaches. He'd been complaining about headaches for some time leading up to this and pretty much just ignored his own body, what his own body was communicating to him. He pretty much just ignored it self-medicated himself with swallowing marijuana and then um, ended up dying. So one of the things that I also found interesting within the autopsy report was a comment that was made by, the, by his neurosurgeon who said that his self-perception was that he was pretty much invincible. He saw himself as being totally invincible. Um, he was also using machines to enhance his human function. So he was trying to push himself way beyond what is what is the norm. And the, for me, the most important thing that I take from this is that this is definitely not the, the mind of a martial artist. So the mind of a martial artist is a person that is a meditator, you're very self-aware, you know what your limitations are, and um, at the core of martial arts, you're actually preparing for a calm and peaceful death. So um, there is a difference between being a fighter and being a martial artist and where I'm coming from now in terms of reading his autopsy and finding out that he was self-medicating with painkillers, um, marijuana, 
his body weight was uh, so low that he was actually deemed to be anorexic when he died. This is not the mind of a martial artist at all. Um, and also it's important for me to just point out that he saw his epilepsy as a weakness. So he didn't want to get help. He didn't ask for, or he, you know, he rejected medical assistance in terms of what was clearly a neurological requirement for him to be a, a healthy human. His own nervous system was malfunctioning um, and he perceived this as a weakness. So therefore he didn't get any help. So that really made me question, um, you know, for myself, that really made me question the fact that I had seen him as this remarkable um, mentor, somebody who to be inspired by for very many years. But if that's actually the way he died, then I'm left with a question mark for myself as to whether or not he is still deemed to be successful. Then the third person is Jesse Levermore. So Jesse Levermore would probably only be known in circles of like of the financial industry or people that, that trade uh, futures or stocks and shares. Jesse Levermore was also self-made. He was, he was entirely self-made. And at the age of 15, he managed to uh, trade in what was known as bucket shops, so which was basically illegal, um, kind of like gambling dens, but not exactly a gambling den. These were places for illegal share trading. At the age of 15, he'd already earned $1,000 at that point entirely by himself, which in today's money is worth about $27,000. So um, he was a multi, multi-million dollar individual who, like he was, you know, he's basically considered a true entrepreneur in the sense that he made millions and lost millions more than once. But for me, he was always somebody who I deemed to be successful. I was very much inspired by him until I put the lens of how he ended his life on there. And it turns out that Jesse Levermore committed suicide at the age of 63. At the time, he died in 1940 and his estate was valued at $5 million. And with a $5 million estate, this man wrote a suicide note to his wife, who happened to be his third wife. He had two failed marriages, and his third wife he ends up committing suicide on. And on his death note, he wrote, I am a failure. I am unworthy of your love. And he shot himself. So for me, that's immensely, immensely sad because, um, you know, within the media, we're seeing a lot of, we're, we're having this conversation and we're seeing discussions of people who we deem to be successful committing suicide. And so he's one of them. So these three, the reason why I'm talking about success is because it's so, it's so very much linked into burnout and how far we're actually willing to push ourselves. And it, um, for me, like I, I, you know, I entirely identify and I, I know exactly what, what was going on with me on my personal journey in terms of how I ended up there. I'm immensely well qualified at my age. Um, I, have a, I have a degree in commerce and finance. I've got a Bachelor of Commerce and Finance. I have a postgrad degree in marketing. I'm qualified as a pharmacist assistant in South Africa, registered uh, or, and worked as a pharmacist technician in the UK. Um, I'm trained as a hospice counselor. I'm a deep wreck diver. I'm a dive master. I'm a qualified yoga instructor. I'm a Pilates instructor. I'm qualified in early childhood education. And, you know, these things I'm just kind of rolling off my tongue because at the, at the time when I was working towards all of these qualifications and essentially building my career, I thought, you know, I, I put substantial value into these things. So I'm currently 41 years old, and at the age of 41, from the age of five until now, I think I've only been, um, I have not been actively enrolled in some form of education for three years of my entire life. Sometimes I was involved, I was enrolled in more than one course at the same time. And then while I was enrolled in these courses, average was really never good enough. Perfection is the only way for me to go. So um, throughout my degree, 
most of my grades were 80% or more and I pushed myself to that extreme for the duration of every single course that I've enrolled in. So there is very much the perfectionist that comes into this, the person that um, needs to excel. So it's, for me, it doesn't necessarily come from a place of competition. I'm not, I don't consider myself a competitor, but I do consider myself someone that I never, I never want to accept um, what I perceive as second best for myself. Now, in certain aspects, of course, working in healthcare and being a pharmacist technician where I was involved in chemotherapy production, for example, there can be no mistake, there can be no fault there, and there has to be absolute perfection because you're dealing with other people's lives. You know, so uh, there's a time and a place for critical thinking skills and for analysis and for, and for perfection, but it simply cannot carry through to every single aspect of your life, for which I now realize, having already burnt myself out twice. So what's important um, to understand is that, you know, what I now know and, and the reason why I can now speak about this is because I've educated myself on these things and I've been on courses and I've been on trainings and I've been on all of the, every single time there's essentially been a challenge or a so-called problem to solve, I've educated myself on that, which has now resulted in the long term, has resulted in Cellular Life Institute, which is absolutely fantastic and I'm immensely happy with the outcome of that. But I do recognize within myself that it needs to, in order for this to be sustainable and continue in a balanced way, it has, I have to approach things um, in a very careful manner. So from a Western perspective, there's an understanding of the two, two hormones that's involved with uh, stress and with, with the functioning of your body. One is cortisol. So your stress hormone is cortisol. And then your feel-good fuzzy hormone is oxytocin. So the first time we experience cortisol and oxytocin is in the moment of our birth, right? So in order for a woman to give natural birth, she has to have very low levels of cortisol and um, her, her oxytocin level needs to increase in order for her to actually give birth to a baby. So for some women, when there's a lot of fear involved or when there's complications in the birth, cortisol levels are too high, so the stress hormone is too high and there is no oxytocin production, so this is why they're, they're not given an oxytocin injection in order to allow for dilation and for the child to be born. So this for me allows um, for some interesting perspective because this does very much explain why people sometimes have a difficulty in understanding like um, within their own body and within this, you know, what I refer to as a felt sense. They struggle to, underst they struggle to recognize the difference between in like a, this, this whole um, pain, pleasure thing, love and fear, all of this gets very much mixed up because of that initial experience of cortisol and oxytocin when we're born. So this also is like why we start feeling great when we're pushing ourselves way too far. But the problem with this is that your kidneys simply can't function with very high levels of cortisol, which is the reason why we then end up with burnout. So for me, one of the main symptoms, and I didn't realize it, um, I actually, even being within a healthcare and an education environment, my own symptoms were so close to me that I didn't actually recognize what was going on with me. And um, this kind of, this conversation then bleeds on into, you know, the kind of relationships that you're in and the, and the people that surround you. Because when we are living in a stressful environment, we do very much rely on the people around us being mirrors. So if your mirror is really not functional um, in terms of reciprocating a level of interaction, then it's really difficult for you to actually recognize your own struggles. So in my case, one of the most important things that which I realize now in hindsight, one of the most clear signs that I was struggling with immense uh, levels of cortisol was that I couldn't sleep. But when I closed my eyes, there was a light it felt like there was a, like a spotlight behind my eyes. So every time I tried to sleep at night, it felt like the lights were still on. So I was sleeping with, um, you know, I would sleep with one of those iPads on, but it really made no difference because my, my eyes were closed and they were, they were then covered, like my eyeballs were still covered, but it still felt like the lights were shining on behind my eyes. So I was getting absolutely no rest. I was sleeping, but I was simply not resting. So this is, this is pretty much, you know, very clearly the pathway of burnout 
your body needs to rest in order for your nervous system to regulate. So I wasn't regulating at all. Um, so there's that understanding from the West, uh, from Western healthcare. Then from the yoga world and from Ayurveda, what, what I understand now and what I'm able to share with the people that I work with more so is that there is an understanding of three doshas. So the three doshas are kind of determined. It, it's your, you know, your characteristics of your physical body and your personality. So this red hair, curly, red curly hair is very much uh, pita, very much the fire, very much, you know, very dynamic, passionate, driven, more prone to things like burnout. Then we have vata, which is a little bit more like, um, kind of like a spaghetti body, right? Like very skinny, very thin. And there's a whole bunch of personality and physical traits that would come with this kind of person. And then the more heavy set, larger kind of square body, again, different traits that would come with these people. So, um, for me, the end result was that when I was able to actually utilize all of the tools and all of the skills that I've accumulated over the course of substantial education and living and working in uh, 33 countries over the course of my travels, I was then able to actually integrate all of this for myself. So the first burnout that I had, I didn't have all of the tools um, from... Asia. I didn't have the tools from yoga, from Ayurveda, from Chinese medicine. So I didn't have that level of awareness. I didn't have those skills at that point. So the first burnout that I had took me about three and a half years to recover from. Again, the first year I had no idea that I was actually recovering from burnout. And for the first year after that, after working, um, I was working 13 hours a day, six days a week. I took one full year and I basically slept almost 365 days away. I just, um, I, was, I was never awake. And again, I didn't realize what was going on and uh, I had no mirror to reflect it back to me. Well, I did have a mirror, but it wasn't really reflecting back. Um, the second time, thankfully enough, it took me only, it took me less than a year. It's, it was still a, a substantial burnout and actually the second burnout was more substantial than the first one. But it took me a year to fully bounce back. Now I do, um, you know, I do realize that I have substantial resilience. I'm very grateful for the fact that I do have substantial resilience just as part of my general makeup. Um, but I think the, you know, the reason why I'm talking about this and the reason why I'm sharing this is that it just becomes important for people to consider what is really important for you. For me, the bottom line is, is that these three people are three people who are deemed to be successful, but are they truly successful if one commits suicide with a substantial bank account, uh, the second one dies at the age of 32 with, with marijuana in his stomach, and the third one dies at 51 from heart, from, you know, from something as simple as complications from hypertension. Um, so what we deem as successful and what we truly want to have in terms of the relationships like Jesse Levermore divorced twice and then committed suicide in his third wife and the second wife that he had he actually abandoned he had deserted his second wife who provided two children for him he deserted his family and then committed suicide with the third wife um, CJ Walker was also divorced and um, Bruce Lee had a wife with two children, but he was unfaithful. So I'm not entirely sure of how that, like, you know, it still doesn't sit entirely comfortably, which is self-evident, probably seeing my reaction as you watch this. But um, it's just, we have to decide... Uh, what you actually want out of life and whether the level of stress that you're putting on yourself is worth the, the benefits that you might be reaping. For me personally, I'm not a very materialistic person. I don't own a lot of possessions. I don't like, I don't, um, I'm not very driven by things. I'm more driven by experiences and I'm more driven by connections that I have to people and building a sense of community. Like these are things that I value immensely. So this is what I, I constantly work towards and I, I work towards having 
deep connections with people as opposed to pushing myself in order to have things. Uh, things and gadgets are really nice, but it's not the reason why I am... Um, it's not where I find my passion. So these are, you know, I'm, I'm sharing this with you so that, first of all, the most important thing to realize is that if you are burning yourself out and you have already burnt yourself out, feel free to send me an email and let me know exactly what's going on with you. I'm more than happy to work with you and um, give you some tips and give you advice and help you out with the Ayurveda and the doshas and give you suggestions of what you can do to help manage your stress better. Um, but it does very much come down to spending time to consider what are the things that you truly value, what is very important for you. So, th so for me, the things that I, my values um, that I've written down just so that I can share them accurately, my values are very much integrity, respect, so respect for myself and respect for others, mutual respect, courage, um, you know, to be brave and to... I think this is where my resilience comes from. I don't like being afraid of, of things or, you know, feeling uncomfortable. So my resilience is very much like if there is something within myself that I feel uncomfortable about, I do it. Um, honor is very important to me. And being honorable is very important to me, which is linked very much to integrity. Compassion. Um... Honesty, sincerity, loyalty, and self-discipline. So this is pretty much my foundation. These are the things that hold me, wrapped very firmly in grace. And then from there, I'm able to determine what are the things that are truly important to me. At this stage, I can honestly say, without coming across as arrogant, my qualifications are like this. I've got, I've got a pack of qualifications and the paperwork of the work experience and the qualifications that I've collected over a substantial portion of my life is like this, um, which allows me to now do the work that I do and offer the services that I now offer. Um, but moving forward, the conclusion that I've taken from all of these qualifications is that the level of perfection and the level of stress that I put on myself to be perfect and to be the achiever and to do the best that I possibly could in order to achieve all of that I'm not entirely sure if it was absolutely necessary because at the end of the day employers don't ask what grades you've got um, and also that you know like moving forward no one asks if you have a history of burnout in order to achieve the things that you have achieved so it, it has to come down to the what you what you value and for me now the most important thing is that I value my own, my own personal integrity. I value my own health, which is also very much why Salia Life Institute has been built because I've moved out of that environment of healthcare and hospitals and pharmacies and environments of illness and gone on to the other side of the scale now where I'm having conversations like this because the intention is that it's preventative. So there needs to be some form of integrative and preventative healthcare as well as wellness, so that um, women my age and or women younger than me don't necessarily have to walk the path of um, not only two burnouts, but ideally not even one. So if you have any questions and you, you need some support, feel free to send me an email at info at salialife.com. I'm happy to share specific details of what's going on with you. Um, like I said, the doshas are involved, but then also the, you know, the hormonal balance. So I can't necessarily tell you on a Facebook Live exactly what you need to do because everyone is different. So I look forward to hearing from you and I hope this helps in some way or at least just gives you some, you know, some food for thought. Have a lovely day. Cheers.